it is absolutely recording data yeah look at this fuel trim cell over here you see activity there between frames 40 and 60. i was not on that screen at all you guys have no idea how important that that information is to be able to have data that's recording off of the screen is something that i'm not seeing the autel do um, only my snap on does it this tool may be the answer for you guys that are starting out in the field and you want an inexpensive scan tool that offers you enhanced diagnostic capabilities to read multiple modules on a car and to be able to do bi-directional controls this could be the guy So maybe for real this time, from Top Don, I have a scan tool? Oh, I don't know. It's an unknown unboxing. Okay, this is the Phoenix. This is the one we were talking about. This looks like they sent me the one with the case, which is the Step Up model. Yeah, they did. <clears throat> so I don't know, I know the Phoenix Light. it's the same platform but it doesn't have the extra cables and i don't know what the price is on this one i the phoenix light was i think 7.99 and I, I know nothing about this tool yet but the reason that yeah this does have the extra cables they were talking about so like if you're working on a you know a bmw 20 pin or a a Benz 38 pin toyota 17 the chrysler 6 pin and then this is Oh wow, pre OBD2 GM, that's kind of cool. Yeah, this is before 96 connectors. Um, ooh, I like that. That I can see me leaving that plugged into the data link connector though. Yeah. The tablet's pretty cool. I, I, I like I like, I the, like hand. the hand. That's cool. And then it has a cable adapter in here. I would imagine so we can use the other components because there's a. There's a OBD kind of adapter cable on that end. I get this a lot. It's like, hey, what, what scan tool should I buy starting out? And my answer has always been get one that offers bi-directional controls. And the price point for bi-directional scan tools has always been higher than what most people want to spend. This, this is under a thousand for this unit. We'll see how this operates. We'll see how this one does. I'm excited to try out the Top Don based on what I'm hearing in the industry and uh, being able to show you guys a lower cost bi-directional scan tool. This would go into the tool. Nope. This is one of those things at this point where you need to read the instructions before you kind of bring something to, to the community. Like a, this is a, a female end how do I adapt this guy? <laughs> this is stupid. You can't figure out how to use it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Everything's wrong. It's been like probably 10 minutes. <laughs> right? I mean, I feel like an idiot. Like, what the hell? And then the instructions, like, there's no picture and it names things. I don't understand. No, we can't read. We need pictures. <laughs> For non-OBD2 vehicle, proceed as follows. One, connect the VCI to the non-16-pin connector via OBD1 adapter. All this is is an extension cable and I believe the reason it's like red and yellow is so you don't forget your you don't forget this. That's why they recommend to use it. I'm guessing that I don't know that for sure but that's kind of what it seems like. And then, you know, what we're having issues with is we do have a 16 pin type connector here. How do we adapt from here to you know, one of these other OBD-1 adapters. Like, I, this is really the only cable that will connect. This is the worst unboxing ever. Dude, tell me about it. So we figured it out. <laughs> I looked at the box and realized that that's there. So that's just storage. Yeah, and the problem with the storage of this, of this is I can't plug it in. I I can't plug it in. And, and we broke the little freaking clip on the inside. I broke it. Yeah, but all you did was pull it out. Why, why won't it plug in? I don't know, but yeah, that port is just to 
plug the little Bluetooth thing in. All right, and that makes sense. And so they sell the version I, without the case, so you right. would need somewhere to store it. Okay, in, in which case then these adapters, that is exactly what we were saying, which is your Bluetooth here, mm -hmm. you are plug in your um, OBD or pre-OBD, so we were talking about Chrysler, there's your pre-OBD2 adapter, and then you have your you know, whether you're going to the battery for power supply or you're going to um, the cigarette lighter for power supply, these older systems required that for communication. So you were actually powering up the DLC circuit. That's why you have that there. There's literally no pins inside of there. And uh, that's to store your, I guess for the Phoenix light that doesn't have all the cables, that's basically this. And this is the Phoenix light. Mm -hmm. And so this would be storage for your DLC, yep. which like for whatever reason doesn't plug in. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason is we broke it. <laughs> well, I, I mean, now we know what this definitely is for too. All this thing is, is an extension. We and, and it being to plug everything into the, <laughs> it, <laughs> the scan tool. It, it being red and yellow is like, hey, don't forget me. I like that. And then you know our storage. I don't. I don't know why. I, I want. I want, to, I want to force it, but I know that that would be a bad idea. All right, so yeah, that was the worst unboxing ever. Is the tool any good? I don't know yet. We're gonna use it on a car here soon and show you. So I, when you went upstairs, Caleb, I had to take this apart because I had to know. I you had to know. The whole thing apart? Just this part. Oh. And to see why this wasn't plugging in, and as you can see, it was. It's just real sloppy. And the reason it's real sloppy is because we broke that clip that holds that in place. And all it is is a piece, like this is totally replaceable, which is nice. Like we could get, you know, Top Don to send us another one of <laughs> <Please>. those. <laughs> it's, it's the clip. Now you can see where it broke inside. Look, this guy, right, right there. That's what kept that in place and Caleb and I were like, well, what plugs in here? <laughs> I think it's important that we keep this version as a public service. I, I probably, I, I would agree with you. And here's what we did. We're like trying to, you know, this we is, tried to plug listen, everything but this it. is what guys do. We don't pick up the owner's manual first, right? We just got to see what plugs in where and try it. This it's designed for this. And, and if you look at the two, the differences in, in these guys, is one's open and one's not. yeah and and that might be enough where that clip would grab this a little bit tighter uh, and so when we snap when we pulled it out we snapped I heard it. it snapped too and i thought it was just unclipping and then i was like why does nothing plug in there? all right so here's your if you guys you know we haven't even tested the tool yet but if you decide you're gonna buy one of these just know that all this top piece is is a holder for your DLC dongle. That's good enough for this right now. Let's get it hooked up to my truck real quick and just see how fast the data is, what the data uh, recordings look like, and then um, also seeing what kind of bi-directional tests we have. All right, just so you guys are, are aware, I I've never used this tool. So there's gonna be things that I will unintentionally possibly misrepresent and so I don't want to go through all the different features of the tool. I, I think probably local diagnostics is where I would want to go for what I'm doing. I can pick where I am. That's cool. American models. That helps me find what I'm familiar with. So this is just what, what it has in this new software updates. Reading, clearing. Oh, set up a new SDM. Guess what we need to do, Caleb? Hmm. I have an airbag no calm mm -hmm. on my truck. And if it needs a new, the SDM's a sensing diagnostic module on the airbag system. Yeah. It says set up new SDM. Pressing OK. We're going to diagnose my truck. Automatically search. Nice. System check. All right. As far as the time goes, we'll kind of watch that. That's pretty cool. It's giving me equipped and not equipped stuff instead of like past. So I mentioned the last scan tools that were sent to me, the under thousand dollar window ones I've been looking for for you guys. And uh, I sent them back to the manufacturer. They were just garbage. And they were telling me on modules not equipped, like the Bose amplifier, it would say past no codes. 
in this case, it's saying not equipped, which is much better in my opinion. So it's done its scan. It just got rid of the ones that said not equipped, it looks like. Maybe the health report's what I wanted. The system scan that I just did just told me what modules were available. I thought it was both the same, like the system scan was not only telling me modules available, but it was telling me uh, what the faults were in them. I just needed to do a health report. I read health report and I'm thinking global OBD2 where you get like the, your readiness monitors, your health report. And I, I misidentified that as far as what that was exactly. All right, so what do we have going on here? EBCM, low brake fluid indicated. Ooh. Lost calm with engine control module. Vehicle interface module, lost calm with restraints control, right? Because I have an airbag light on all the time. Instrument panel, lost communication with restraints control. The digital radio receiver says antenna ground circuit short to battery. That's an aftermarket radio. I just want to see what kind of bi-directional tests I have. Let's go body control module, interior lighting, courtesy lamp. So watch right here. Turn that on. Turn that off. Do it again. That's done with the scan tool, it's pretty cool. What else can we do in here? Doors, unlock rear doors, lock rear doors. That locked all the doors. Unlock. Uh, what else can I show? That was in the body. I'm sure that there's more things I can show you in here. Let's see what this will give me. Um, this is in the body system. Let's, let's, let's see what the data stream looks like. Interior lighting, let's do select all, press OK, and we can graph stuff. This is my courtesy lamps. That's me turning the dial. So let's just say you're going down the road, you're looking at some changing parameter. For this data, can I freeze it? I can zoom. I'm not sure how to freeze it. Record. Oh. So it's not recording all the time. I have to hit record. Okay, now it's recording. And if I'm looking at the graph and I pause it, oh, it saved it. So it doesn't look like I can stop it though. Other than that, this is the kind of stuff that I need to be able to play with the tool more and bring to you guys. My apologies for that. Let's keep moving. Let's get out of here. Let's go to my engine management system and then we'll just wrap this up. Really what this will boil down to from this point in time, I can't you know, endorse the tool and be like, oh yeah, you guys definitely want this. You're just gonna see the tool in the videos that we're doing and um, we'll be able to bring you real time usage of the tool. This is on my engine, special functions, idle, learn, reset, that's cool. Crank position variation. Heated O2, learn, oil life reset, all good stuff. Read data. So there's 62 in this list. Let's see how bogged down it is with all 62 selected. And what I'll do is uh, my APP angle here, which is my accelerator pedal, I'm just gonna step on the gas pedal and let's see how quickly this updates, ready? to the floor oh wow that's fast that's with all 62 so no delay in data i mean i i really want to name the company that i looked at that sent me those scan tools caleb i did this test and i counted to like 20. That's i'm insane. not i'm not kidding i mean with like 10 data parameters selected i counted to 20. I'm like, this is absolutely useless. How can you troubleshoot with that kind of delay? And then when I turned them all off, I think I counted to like five or six. Like this is 62 data parameters selected and that's pretty responsive. That's pretty responsive. It doesn't look like I can zoom like way, way in. I can zoom pretty far out and that looks like fully zoomed in, but that's not bad. You know, I, I like that. I can go slow and kind of look for any glitches, dropouts. I'll have to get used to the um, freeze and record functions of the tool because I'm definitely not used to that. All right, so question now, I'm on like page five of six. It looks like it's only updating what's on the page. If I open and close the accelerator pedal, I'm not on it. Scroll back up to that. 
it did record that. Frame 360, I did a couple of APP sweeps. Let's go to a different page so that's not on the screen. Doing a couple of more APP sweeps. I wanna know, is it recording what's off the frame? Let's go back up to that. Did it record after frame 360? It sure did. That's impressive. So one of the things that you'll find me doing with my videos with you guys is you'll see me frequently grabbing the Snap-on scanner for data comparisons. One of the main reasons I will do that during test drives is the Snap-on unit will record all of the data regardless if it's on the screen or not. And guess what this top Don is showing me? It's doing the same thing. Even though that's not on the screen, I'm not losing that data. If I record a data uh, packet, I'm not losing that if it's not on the screen. That's what that tells me right there because I was not on that screen and it showed it. That's pretty cool. I like that. I just have to get used to how the record feature works. Unlike the snap on one that's recording all the time. And when you hit pause, you can go back and look at data. I'm not seeing this like that. You have to hit record then do your thing. Let's see how much else is being recorded here. I hit stop, press okay. Now how do I view that recorded data? My report, our recorded data, got it. So you find that under my reports, recorded data. That's the last one I did. Let's see how much of that was recorded. I just had the key on and I was messing with the APP. Let's select them all, press okay. Almost up to frame 80. So looking at the top middle of the APP, if I go to the next screen, you can see my engine off time. I have a timer there. And that timer, let's back up. Let's see if that timers. Yeah, that timer's counting the whole time, which is just showing you that it is absolutely recording data yeah look at this fuel trim cell over here you see activity there between frames 40 and 60. i was not on that screen at all same thing the tps that's awesome between frames 40 and 60. we have activity there i was not on that screen you guys have no idea how important that that information is to be able to have data that's recording off of the screen is something that i'm not seeing the autel do um only my snap on does it so um, props to uh, uh, Top Don on, um, on that feature. And I'm looking forward to playing around with this tool some more. I, I really feel like this tool may be the answer for you guys that are starting out in the field and you want an inexpensive scan tool that offers you enhanced diagnostic capabilities to read multiple modules on a car and to be able to do bi-directional controls. This could be the guy. So more to come on the Phoenix. Uh, the Top Don Phoenix. Thanks guys, we'll see you soon. All right, so this Top Don scan tool that we got, I'm working directly with Top Don and what they did is they are offering a, I think it was a 10% uh, on the cost of the tool. So 10% of 800, that's $80. If you purchase it using the promo code Danner, then $80 of that 800, instead of me getting any affiliate revenue, that's going to St. Jude's Research Hospital. And I thought, man, that's freaking phenomenal. Not only can I show you guys a tool that I'm excited about because of the cost and what it can do, but also to help others in the process, right? That's pretty awesome.